On her new album, Home Video, Richmond singer-songwriter Lucy Dacus takes a deep dive into her past growing up in River City, with autobiographical songs that seem a bit more detailed and contemplative than those on her 2017 disc, Historian, which launched her to national and international indie rock fame. Home Video has been wowing the critics and delighting fans since it was released earlier this month, and the Maggie Walker Governor's School graduate will kick off a big tour with two nights at the National on September 10th and 11th, alongside fellow boy genius bandmate Julian Baker. I recently spoke with Lucy via Zoom for an article in Richmond Magazine, but could only use parts of our revealing conversation. Here is the full interview. So, um, uh, you know, I want to talk about the record, but I want to talk about how you're going to promote the record. You know, we're in very uncertain times right now. As, That's as you know, true. Uh, do you know what the plans are if you're actually going to go on tour or how you're going to promote it? Or Yeah, we have it booked for the fall. And, you know, I, I think it's really good to live optimistically and make plans and just know that if they can't happen, we'll cancel them. But yeah, I mean, I it looks like maybe by September we'll really be able to do shows. Um we have, we have two shows at the National to start the whole tour, and um, yeah, I'm really excited. That's great. Now, um, the 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 new record, uh, if I'm to believe these liner notes, I'm not sure I would have picked this up just listening to it. Um, it it's a sort of a nostalgic look at Richmond, uh, your 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 roots. Uh, is that uh, overstating it? Yeah, I mean. There's not as much references to like physically Richmond, but um, yeah, it's all about growing up in Richmond and like, you know, the formative friendships that I had and mm-hmm. moments in my life that kind of like made me who I am today. Yeah. For better or worse. Yeah, I guess I always assumed you were already doing all that. I mean, I, I you know, your, your songs of uh, a lot of them have already been very autobiographical, I thought. It's true, but previous songs, I I think I wanted to make them more general. Like, it's a song about having writer's block, or it's a song about having a crush, or a song about loss in general, or traveling, and not as many songs that are, like, literally note-for-note, factual retelling Mm -hmm. stories from my life. So this one just, it feels tonally a little different. It feels, like, less pointed at the masses and a little more pointed at myself. Hmm. Uh, were these all written during the uh, quarantine or were these things that you had in the bag from earlier? Uh, talk I about- started writing these songs in 2017 and we actually recorded in the summer of 2019. So oh. none of the production of this record was done during quarantine. We did mix it remotely over quarantine and that took like almost eight months just because, you know, mm-hmm. sending things back and forth. Yeah. It's a lot harder than being in the room to do it. Well, have you been writing since um, since we've all been holed up? You know, I, I've talked to a bunch of musicians about uh, being uh, holed up, and uh, some of them say it's helped, but some of them say it, it hasn't. They, they've, they've had block. Yeah, I have been writing. I think because I know that, like, it's going to be so long until anything comes out because I have to put out this record and then tour it and stuff like it's going to be years before anything I write now will even be heard. Mm -hmm. So it feels kind of like the pressure's off. Um, I mean, I'm not writing, not trying to write like a magnum opus. I understand people like feeling the pressure of needing to make something great with all of this empty time. But I don't know. I think if you can like convince yourself that that pressure doesn't exist, it's actually easier to make things. Mm -hmm. Well, to my ears, the record seems quieter than your other stuff, but is that just my dumb ears, or or, uh, was that a conscious effort to do that? Yeah, I think that's true. I think that the subject matter just required a more, like, contemplative atmosphere, or, like, the lyrics, I really wanted them to be the center of attention, and so uh, the tone is a little more, like approachable Mm -hmm. but also i had a vocal injury in the summer of 2019 before we recorded and so i was being really conservative with my voice i was only making noise for like two hours a day 
when we were recording from like 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. Mm-hmm. And um, so I, I was trying to be very careful and intentional with my voice. And I think it actually matches the, the songs most of the time. Right, right. Um, if you don't mind my asking, what happened to your voice? What What was it? I was on tour in Europe and we were playing a show in Edinburgh, I guess it's called. And um, I felt like a popping feeling mm. in my throat. And then when I got home, actually like days after my Friday Tears show, mm-hmm. I um, was told that I had pre-nodes. So um, they were like, you need to be silent for a month oh. in order to avoid surgery. You need to change your diet and you need to do warm ups. You need to talk differently. And um, so I was silent for the entire month of July and then went and recorded in August. Um, wow. You know, I've heard that before. That that can be a really dangerous thing. Um, any idea of how it happened, how it developed? Well, I'm not a big drinker. I don't drink coffee. Um, and then in, in Europe, though, I was drinking coffee to not be tired. And then every place that you go they have like their local beer or alcohol that they Mm -hmm. want you to try Mm -hmm. and so I was drinking coffee drinking alcohol and also flying a lot from show to show and like having to fly and then hours later play like a festival show or something um and like that dries out your throat so much and I just wasn't hydrating enough so yeah it was just like a also I was really stressed out (laughs) that was like a really tough tour um the whole whole band was really stressed because the travel was so bad. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think it was just like everything was against me. <laughs> and right. I think my body just told me, like, you have to chill yeah. or else it's going to be like a catastrophe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, are you uh, I'm, I'm just curious. Are you is is this something that comes naturally to you? I mean, I know the the music does, but. Does the rest of it come naturally to you? The all these interviews you have to do, all this constantly being in the spotlight is that is that something that you you you're fine with? I think it doesn't come naturally, and I've had to learn how to deal with it. And I don't feel even that I'm that good at it yet. Um, but it's happening, and so I try not to like. I don't know freak me out Mm -hmm. (laughs) I feel like the like the thing I just have to remember when I'm doing interviews is that it's like very lucky that anybody cares and so I have to just treat it as like a like okay I'm grateful to be here like whether the interview is good or bad or whatever you know like I not only do I need to like recognize that it's a privilege to be you know highlighted but then also it's not so much a privilege that I have to give everything away Like, I think that over the years, I've realized, like, I do need to keep some information to myself Mm -hmm. in order to feel a sense of security. Yeah. And so it's been like a learning process to figure out what I'm willing to share and what needs to stay sacred in my life. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I don't I don't really like innately being perceived, but I am glad that anybody is willing to spend the time Mm -hmm. on my stuff. Do you uh, do you think because your st- your material is so open that that kind of invites people to to come on in and just make themselves at home or? Yeah, I think that people you know read into the songs a lot in a way that is meaningful for them and can sometimes confuse like my work with my personhood. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, it's like all with good intentions that that would happen. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's been freaky, especially in Richmond, just cause it's a, a smaller city. Like I think people have, um, hyped me up beyond what I'm worth, honestly, like <laughs> into the point of being kind of scared. Like there was one time I was at Hardywood and a drunk guy came up to me and said, Hey, you're Lucy Dacus. You live at, and then said my address to oh. me. Yeah. Like it had been getting around where I live and some people like came to my door and like knocked on the door wanting to say nice things and be kind. But I, I don't think people understand that it's very threatening to know that your personal information is mm-hmm. um, just out there. 
Right, or you could be spied upon at any time. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't like to think about it. It freaks me out. It's it's like the worst thing about all this is just like feeling like people don't have very good boundaries. Mm-hmm. Um, in terms of the songwriting, how do you do it? Do you write the lyrics first? Are you someone who who puts the words down first? And yeah. Yeah, lyrics first every time, along with melody. Usually how I write is I'll be on a walk and then like sing to myself, mm-hmm. figure out lyrics and melody, and then get home and figure out the guitar part. At at what point do you bring the band into the process? When it's completely done or when it's in sketch form? I will show Jacob, my guitarist, the song, and um, then we'll kind of talk about arrangement, but we really figure things out in the studio. Um, which I, I like because you can kind of hear different options Mm -hmm. back to back Mm -hmm. and switch things out. And yeah, so the band element is synonymous with the recording element. And then once we have the recording, we'll learn it with the live band for touring. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. I was wondering how that worked uh, and how much the producers are involved in the songwriting process and. Not at all. Zero percent. Right. But they're obviously giving input as to how the song should sound. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm a producer on my own records, too, and it does feel very collaborative in the room. But um, I think that, you know, over the years working with Colin and Jacob, we've developed such a good vocabulary and our tastes are so similar. So we'll begin with all of my ideas and then if we get to a roadblock, we're, we'll kind of like sort out, like we'll problem solve together by having ideas. Yeah. Um, you you seem to be having fun with Boy Genius and, and they appear on the record. Uh, what's uh, are you uh, are you going to be doing more work with them in the future? Uh, talk about that relationship. Yeah, I don't know if we'll do anything. Um, I think if we ever do, it'll be as spontaneous as. The last thing, um, I think that at its core, Boy Genius just has to be fun. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the only way that we'll enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But our, our friendships are strong. Like we have a group chat that we talk in all the time and send memes to each other. And, you know, we just we show each other our, our own music and get feedback from each other. Um, not necessarily critique. Because mostly we just say hell yeah Mm -hmm. to each other's stuff since Mm -hmm. we're just fans of each other. Um, But yeah, I feel like I do like I hope that we do something. Do you have people who will critique you? Like, is there are there people or is there a person you take the material to and and uh, they can often let you have it? Um, I feel like I'm a pretty big critic of myself and I won't show something until I'm proud of it. Mm -hmm. Um, and like I'll run by like Colin and Jacob when we're in the studio, like, does this word fit? You know, do, do I need to write another verse Mm -hmm. to fill this out? You know, Mm -hmm. and it's differences between like the word a and the word the, Mm -hmm. but that makes a difference like sonically within a, in a phrase, if you want it to be more, mouthy or more open like even minor differences like that Mm -hmm. are things that i think about and we decide together yeah um but yeah i I don't really it feels very isolated the writing process for me how uh how conscious of you are are you of like songwriting techniques of uh uh song forms uh uh do you study songwriting not at all. I've had like zero musical training. Um, and, but I would like to know more, even, a, even just to find out what rules I'm already following. Mm-hmm. I was just talking about this with a friend, like I have rules in my head for what makes a good song, but I don't know if that corresponds to a technique or if it's, you know, different. Yeah. yeah. So I, I think I'd be interested to know more, um, Cause also like maybe I have a t- technique of my own mm-hmm. that I could have an easier time communicating right. if I knew about other ones. 
Well, yeah, the, uh, I think it was Orson Welles who never liked to know how stuff is done because he wanted to feel like he invented it. So it's sort of yeah. some sort of. I feel some... that way about recording. Mm-hmm. Like I, I don't know much, and I, I like don't even know that much about guitar. You know, I play in this open tuning to make it really easy to find stuff. So I don't even know what chords I'm playing a lot of the time. <laughs> I just search for the sound of the guitar, and like that, that's enough for me. Yeah. Um. So this new record, uh, a little bit more, I don't know, subdued maybe. But uh, is so is the next one going to be? Like uh, balls first rock and roll. I mean, yeah, it's funny. I don't think that this record is subdued. Like there are some pretty loud parts. Yeah. There's a lot of yeah, there things. Are. Like yeah, um, I don't. I, there's not as much distortion. I felt like if I did like that was the historian was intentionally like a really distortion heavy mm-hmm. record. Um, and this one, I I didn't want to make more of the same, but I still feel like it is exciting or sometimes heavy um but yeah i don't know about the next one yet i feel like i can't really know until i've written you know yeah written songs but you know uh, you can have an impulse like mm, man i've been in the house you know for in a year and a half i i need to you know get some loud rock and roll out there or whatever yeah i i don't really care about genre <laughs> and i actually don't really care about any particular sounds in general i really care about songs and so i think that what will probably happen is i'll write a batch of songs and then figure out what they need and i don't really like staying in one lane so i'm hoping that whatever i do next feels different than anything else mm-hmm. well i really appreciate the time today i know you're busy as heck yeah, no, thanks for making the time. I mean, I mean, Richmond stuff always comes first, you know? Yeah, well, uh, I, I hope that it, that you never feel like you're a stranger in your own hometown, though. Uh, I, I know I know <laughs> I, I know what you're saying, but I, I hope that doesn't happen because I know that people really respect you. Yeah, I don't feel like a stranger. In fact, I think I feel so known, like I feel so understood that yeah. occasionally I just need that distance to figure out you know, what I think about myself because so many people in Richmond have an opinion of me mm-hmm. at this point. Um, but I mean, I'll, Richmond will always be home. Like I, whenever I'm there, it feels like, a, like part of my body, like wherever mm-hmm. my feet are on the ground, my body continues into the ground that I'm standing on. Like it, it really feels like a part of me in a big way. Yeah. Um, and I'm grateful for that. Well, in a way, it's your own fault. I mean, you you grew you grew up in front of everybody, and you know everybody everybody thinks they know you. You know. Yeah, that's not my fault. You know, I didn't shoot like, but I. It's not. It's my blessing. It's not my fault. It's my blessing that my parents live there, that I happen to grow up in a place that really is a great place. Yeah. Well, Lucy, thanks and uh, best of luck. And uh, the album sounds great. I can't wait to play it on the radio. I can't wait to wh- play it on the radio. Yay. Yeah, I, I'm i happy you like it. Yeah. And uh, uh, keep doing what you're doing. And um, I guess I'll find out uh, from Jessica uh, the uh, where it goes from here, what kind of tour you'll do and, and, and what have you. Cool. Yeah, for sure. Thanks, thanks so much. Thanks for talking. All right. Bye. Bye. Lucy Dacus comes to the National on September 10th and 11th. Home Video, her new album on Matador Records, is available now. And you can get more information at lucydacus.com.